Hey there, Louis Acabalas here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a breakout room in a Microsoft Teams meeting before the meeting begins. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now to create a breakout room before a meeting begins, the first thing that you'll need to do is to go ahead and actually schedule your meeting. Now, before I click send to schedule this meeting, I just want you to take note of the tabs that appear at the top of the invite. So you can see right now there is a details tab and the scheduling assistant tab. Now you'll notice that when I go ahead and create this meeting and come back into it, there are going to be a series of additional tabs. Now, as you can see at the top, there are additional tabs, as I mentioned, and what you'll notice at the very end is a tab that is titled breakout rooms. So this is where you actually come to create your breakout rooms ahead of time before the meeting actually begins. Once you click on the breakout rooms tab, you can come in and actually configure the number of breakout rooms that you want to create. You can also add participants to the breakout rooms. You can appoint breakout room managers, etc. Now, once you've clicked into the breakout rooms tab, what you want to do is click on create rooms. And here it's going to ask you to specify how many rooms you will need for your meeting and you can click on the drop down, and you can go ahead and select this number. Now you can see if I scroll all the way to the bottom, the max number of breakout rooms is 50. And when you are using breakout rooms in a Microsoft Teams meeting, uh, it is going to restrict the number of participants to 300. That is the limit at the time of recording this video. If you've invited more than 300 people, then you're not going to be able to use breakout rooms. Now I'm going to go ahead and select three breakout rooms. Once you've selected the number of rooms that you require, you wanna go ahead and click add rooms. And so you can see here now that your breakout rooms have been created. You can see room one, two, and three, and you can also see the number of participants that have been assigned to each room. Now I'll start off by showing you how to assign participants into the breakout rooms that you've created. Now to do this, you want to go ahead and click on the Assign Participants button. This is going to bring up this menu here, which is prompting you to select whether you want teams to automatically assign individuals into the breakout rooms at random, or whether you want to actually assign individuals manually. Now, if you want teams to do it for you randomly, then just go ahead and select Automatically and click Next. And if you want to actually allocate individuals into specific rooms, then you want to go ahead and click on manually. Now I'm just going to click on manually and then I'm going to click on the next button. And because I selected manually, Teams is now asking me to go ahead and add each individual who is on the meeting invitation into a specific room. Now to do this, you can either just select all and assign them into a room or you, again, you can actually just add a check mark next to the specific individuals who you want to be allocated into a specific room. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and select the first three participants and then click on the Assign dropdown and move these folks into room one. And you can see here after I clicked on room one, the room column updated. And again, if I wanted to change this for one of these individuals, I could just click on the dropdown to the right of the room that they've been assigned into and select a different room. I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly assign the rest of these individuals into another room. And again, you can see that it updated here and then I'm going to add the last individuals here into another room as well. Once you've added all of the individuals into the specific rooms, you want to go ahead and click assign. And you can see here now that each room card has updated to show the specific number of participants that have been allocated into the respective rooms. Now, once you've assigned your participants, again, if you want to go ahead and actually change the assignments, you can just click on the assign participants button again, and this is going to bring up the assignment menu. And again, you can just click into the room and actually reassign individuals as required. 
Next, what I'm going to show you is how to actually configure some specific room settings. Now you'll notice that each room card has a three dots icon. And if you hover over this icon, this is the room settings button. So clicking on this is going to bring up a menu and there's three options. Starting from the bottom, you can go ahead and delete a room. This is in case you've accidentally added uh, more rooms than required. You can go ahead and actually just delete it by clicking on delete. Now, what I'll do for demonstration purposes is I'll go ahead and delete room three just to demonstrate what happens after you've already allocated participants into that room. Clicking on delete is going to ask me to confirm that I want to delete the room. I'm gonna go ahead and click on delete room. And what you can see here is that it did not automatically allocate those individuals into another room. So you can tell because their icons appear at the top. And if I click on the assign participants button, you can see that those individuals who were in that room that I deleted are now unassigned. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add them back into another room. Now, the other settings that you have access to when you're creating your breakout rooms before the meeting begins is you can actually change the room name. And this is just to make it easier for you to identify which room is which. So if you wanna actually change the room name, you wanna click on that more settings button and click on edit. And you can see here, I have the option to give this room a name. So I'm just going to call this idea room and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And you can see here that that name has updated. Now, the last thing that I'll show you is how to actually configure room settings. Now to do that again, you wanna click on the settings icon on the specific room card and you wanna go ahead and click on the settings option in the dropdown menu. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to bring up a meeting options window specifically for that breakout room. So you can see here at the very top, it has the name of the breakout room and the date and the time. And you can see below the actual name of the breakout room, there's meeting options. And this window may look familiar because this is the exact same meeting options window that you have when you're actually changing specific meeting settings. And so you can go ahead and configure the breakout room settings uh, to your specific preferences. So if you want to actually allow meeting chat and reactions, you can toggle these on and off as required. Now, what I want to draw your attention to is you also have the option to appoint what are called breakout room managers. Now, a breakout room manager is an individual who has some elevated permissions. And specifically, breakout room managers can add and delete rooms in your meeting they can actually assign and reassign participants into different rooms. They can also open and close the rooms to actually start and end the breakout sessions. They're also able to jump into any room. They can set time limits for room sessions, send announcements, and even recreate rooms. So if you're looking at using breakout rooms to facilitate sessions and they're are specific people that might be presenting or facilitating, you wanna go ahead and assign them into the specific breakout rooms, and then you want to go ahead and follow the steps that I'm about to show you. Now to appoint a breakout room manager, again, you want to come into the specific room settings and the role is tied to what you select in this who can present field. Now you'll notice by default, it's set to everyone. If you want to assign specific breakout room managers, you want to change this to specific people. And what you're going to see is that this now adds a field called choose presenters with a dropdown. And if you go ahead and click into that specific dropdown, what it's going to show you is those individuals that have been allocated into that specific breakout room. Now that's an important step. If you want to assign breakout room managers to a room, you wanna make sure that you actually add them in as a participant in that room before you come into the meeting settings. Otherwise, when you select specific people, you're not going to see this dropdown and you're definitely not going to see any individuals in this field because it won't actually be there. Now, if I wanted Alex Wilbur to be appointed a breakout room manager for the idea room, I can go ahead and select him and then I can go ahead and click save. And so that's how you can actually configure the breakout room settings and even appoint breakout room managers. Now, the last thing that I'll show you is how to actually launch these breakout rooms once your meeting starts. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and join this meeting all right, now I've gone ahead and I've joined the meeting. And if you wanna go ahead and actually launch your breakout rooms from the meeting window, what you want to do is click on the breakout room icon 
at the top of the meeting window. This is going to bring up the breakout rooms menu. And so you can see here that our rooms, which have already been configured, show up. So you can see the idea room with five participants and you can see room two with two participants are both listed here and they're closed. And again, if I wanted to go ahead and assign or manage the participants, I could click on the assign participants button. And this is going to bring up the assign participants menu that we just configured. And again, here I can go ahead and actually change individuals into different rooms. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and click on cancel. If you wanted to actually go ahead and open the rooms, then you want to click on the open rooms button. And if you wanted to go ahead and add an additional room, then you could go ahead and click on this plus sign. And this is going to permit you to add an additional room. And you can see here that the room has been added. So that's it. This was just a quick tutorial showing you specifically how to create breakout rooms in a Microsoft Teams meeting before the meeting begins. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Yacobalas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.